Good evening, folks. Welcome back to Celtic Fans TV. Celtic have won a world record eighth domestic treble here at Hamden with a 3-1 victory over Inverness. I've got Callum and Martin here to go over it. Martin, a historic day. Um, we, we got the win. What did you make of the game, first of all? Uh, so first and foremost, just delighted to get the win. These games can be quite sticky, I think. Um, in Billy Dodd's uh, interviews during the week, he, you know, he was making it pretty clear that he wanted to stay in the game till late on. Yes. I think it just came to frustrate us and that's exactly what they did in that first half. We were huffing and puffing playing the game in their half, but couldn't really penetrate in the final third. And a lot of fans were getting frustrated in the chat at half-time was, you know, we hadn't they performed well, but mm. we got that initial goal and then the big thing was to get that second goal. And once we got the second goal, you know, for me the result was never in doubt and we started to, we started to really take control of the game without being at our very, very best. Um, but as you said, Paul, the big thing was to, was to get that treble. It's been a bit of an emotional week, and I know we'll come to it, uh, but it has been an emotional week. But I was talking to my wee boy there about some fans, I think, just, you know, the last few weeks, maybe we've not got the results, making a big song and dance with the results. And again today, maybe making a wee bit of song and dance with it, not being a vintage performance. Mm. I'll probably get some of these numbers wrong, but I think in the first 128 years of our history, we won three trebles. Mm. And in the last seven, we've won five. You know, it's hard to believe. You know, you have to sit down and actually... You probably just, as you win each trophy, enjoy it and move on and don't really think too much about what you've achieved, but five trebles in seven years. And we're talking about eight trebles in our history, 135 years. It's, it's absolutely remarkable. incredible. So today for me should be a celebration of you know, that achievement, not just, the, not just the trophy today, not just the season, but the fact that we've won five trebles in the last seven years. Sensational. Mm. Aye, it's absolutely unbelievable, Callum. Just on the game, I thought it was a bit stuffy in the first half. Inverness's game plan worked to an extent. I don't think we really had too many chances. Um, we're a bit loose with passing at times, but we get a goal at a good time. You don't want to go into half time now, now. Um, and I think it's O'Reilly down the right hand side, picks up Kyogo. First chance of the game, top corner. There's a reason that he finished in the league with the most assists, because that's what he does. But people don't really recognise it a lot. It can kind of go under the carpet, and it's just like, oh, O'Reilly had a stinker, but he'll come up with just really important moments like that. And fair play to Inverness. Inverness done really well, actually. I thought their shape was good. That heat must have been hard to play in. I mean, whoever allowed McGregor, Hattati to go with Under Armour on, <laughs> get sacked, because that is atrocious. We were sweating and just standing. <laughs> Running about must have been a shift, so credit to the players. They stuck with it. People are expecting to go and batter Inverness. It's never, ever going to happen, because Inverness come here, and as you say, they're going to sit, they're going to be stuffy, they're just going to go long with the ball and try and stay in the game as long as possible. But Celtic just kept with it, and you say it, it's just... It's, it sums up our season of what we do. Sometimes when we've not been in games over the last two months, we've not been great at times, but we just we have a knack to finding that way. And Martin touches, there's a reason we find the way because trebles just they they don't come often, but they come they come often in my life and in your life. <laughs> no matter, it's coming in your life, right? <laughs> but like my wee brother's not that old, and he, he's seen Celtic with the five trebles, and that's quite an incredible actually moment and period of the club's history that. I spoke about this before, when, when we do go, and for, for ages for now, people will look back at this moment and go, what a time to be a Celtic supporter. Like, truly, truly blessed to, to follow this club. Um, and I just, just a, an emotional, an emotional day for, for obviously certain reasons, but I am just, I'm over the moon that Celtic have got it. And I, the goal, Kyogo, how good? 34 mate. goals this season. He's just, he's there and he's always there. Like the Celtic fans are, that's where he is. He always pops up at the right time. He's quiet throughout the whole game. But bang, he is an instant killer. He'll just take the ball away, take the game away for you in that split moment. Or really does really well. He gets by, he faces up somebody. I don't know who the Inverness player is, but he faces him up for the first time. He actually takes somebody one on one, drops the left shoulder, goes right, puts the ball across, and Kyle goes there and he does what he does. Martin, he's a great chance two minutes later for a second goal as well. Um, he's had a couple of races already in cup finals for Celtic, but. He didn't get it today. We did get the second goal through a badder in the second half, and I thought that five, ten minutes after that goal was the most intensity we played at. Yeah. Um, it looked like we could smell blood and we're going to go and try and kill the game, but didn't quite materialise. And I think we did get a wee bit casual when we just before we conceded the goal. We could see that we dropped off a wee bit. The intensity wasn't there, and we lose a poor goal for a cross. Daniel Mackay's got the freedom of the box to head it in, um, and it was never nervy. Um, but it was good that we got that third goal to seal it with Jota and the scenes at the end, fantastic. I mean, starting with the Kyogo chance, from where I was sitting, so he's peeled away and he, 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 he did what he does, as Callum said, and he just created space for himself, you know, for somebody who's not got the physicality and he's playing up against some some big, big defenders in, in Inverness uh, back four, but he just finds that space and a good pass has been played into him and he almost took it too quickly, he had a bit of time just to... I thought he could maybe have went left foot, mate. Ah, he could have, you know, yeah. he could have taken, taken a second, but he's just trying to... 
you know, very, very quickly, instinctively, just stick it in the corner. The three year old sitting, it looked like it was going to go in, but it, obviously it didn't. But at half time, a few of the boys were saying, well, you know, second half's going to be a different game, and the rest are going to come out and open up, and that'll create space and all the rest. I wasn't convinced. I thought, 1 0, they're just going to sit tight and they're going to try and get the equaliser late in the game. You know, they're not going to go chasing the two goals too early. But you're right, there then there was a period in the game where you know Celtic certainly weren't happy to sit in one goal. We wanted that second goal, we were all feeling it, and I'm sure the team were feeling it as well. And then they did, they stepped up. What I remember about the second goal was there was a couple of free kicks that we should have mm -hmm. got and the referee gave us advantage. But yeah. it wasn't just about the ref giving us advantage, it was about our, our quick thinking, yeah. which epitomises that Celtic team as we know, eh? Yeah. That that desire and that appetite to react quickly. We've seen so many goals. You know, the Rangers, the Rangers goal is a classic one, isn't it? Yeah. I mean that's the one at Hamden that, that we all remember the most. But today was another example of that. And I just thought it was beautiful. They didn't panic, played a few nice passes and boom, second goal goes in. And then that, that goal for Inverness kind of came from nowhere. Um I've seen on some of the BBC commentary chat that they thought that the Inverness had earned the goal. I'm not convinced they had, but they got the goal nevertheless. And you're looking at the clock, thinking, just see this out. Uh, but no, we, we wanted that third goal, that killer goal, to finish it off. And I thought, in fact, we're maybe going to get a fourth mm. as well. We were pushing, weren't we? Ah, I mean, what a chance! Glorious chance, man. What is it we have in Hamden? Uh, he always has one on ones. He just can't score them. He's had four or five, wasn't he, this uh, season alone? Eh? So, but yeah, three, I think we earned at least a three-one. Mm. And I loved uh, Cal McGregor and, and a couple of goals. And the build-up to the goal, he was just playing those. You pass to me, I'll pass to you. Three or four passes, and then boom, you know, because the team's thinking, at what point are they going to make this pass? Yeah. And they're kind of drawn to the what's going on there and then. And of course, there's players making runs there, and, and then that killer pass is played. So I thought that was quite clever from the captain as well. He was involved in a couple of goals. Aye, um, I don't. I just need to touch on the referee in a wee bit today, right? Those two fouls in the build-up. Did they give bookings? I don't know if he gave bookings because the two of them so. were absolute stonewall yellow cards. Didn't he give bookings? And I don't know if there's been a rule change, but it used to be that if there's a head injury, you need to stop the game. But it looks like any injury. After physical contact, if somebody goes down, John Beaton stopping the game. He stopped the game twice today, and there was nothing wrong with Inverness. But he was just lying down, stopped the flow, like took possession away for us to give us back a drop ball. And one, one, uh, one time the guy didn't even get treatment. The other time he did get treatment, he's back his feet in two seconds, and absolutely no need to stop the game. Anyway, that's by the by. Um, we we had chances for for more goals, Callum, but. Um, the scenes at the end with Jota celebrating and then um, the trophy presentation, absolutely brilliant. What an atmosphere it was at the end. Um, I'm sure all eyes were trained in Ange Postacoglu, um, analysing, over-analysing body language and looking for signs. But, um, I mean, the special scenes, wasn't it? It was. I, I felt a wee bit, like, no emotional, but it, it was special. I mean, I'll, I'll be big enough to say I almost had a tear in my eye, like, ge genuine, because Ange Postacoglu, since he's came in, is showing me the way I think and believe football should be played. That's genuinely, like, take Celtic out of the equation, just football, when I sit in the house and I watch football and I see lots of managers, lots of teams, I think that's the best way to play football. On the front foot, attacking, uh, inverted full-backs, outnumbering people in the middle of the park, uh, overlapping your wingers, just making it too much, N never stop, it does sum that up, but that's the way I think football should be played. And you have people like Simeone's and Mourinho's and Conte's, that, earn the, that, that win a lot in football, which is fair play, but they do it in a style that I just don't prefer. So Ange Postacoglu over these last two years has shown me, and if he does go, then that shows me that Celtic should stick with that, and that's the Celtic way. That is the Celtic way, and that's why he's so affectionate and affiliated with the club, because everybody has that emotional connection that just connects with the guy, because everybody laughed at him when he came in, including some Celtic fans did, of course he did. I mean, people are praying that he leaves now. Like, genuinely, on the other side, they're, they're dying for him to go because of how good the guy is. And, and as long as he stays in Scotland, and I hope that he is here next season, he'll continue to win because he's, he's, he's an elite manager. And that's why Tottenham are, are chasing him. Tottenham are a, are a very big club because they, they get all the financial side and, and everything that comes with it. Mm. He'll never, ever, ever, ever touch a club like, like Celtic again. It's it's just... it's oh, Honestly, it's, it's special, like... Je Paul, it's like we all know, right? But it is—it's so special and unique. Like you're watching that there, and Celtic was good for Ange Postecoglou, but Postecoglou was good for Celtic. It, we fitted each other at the right time, and if he does go, he leaves a, 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 as a legend because he's now the five managers on that list that's got a treble. It's—it's it's hard to do that. Like, so he's—he's he's came in, he's revitalised the club, he's took us to a new level, he's shown us that's the path, that's the model. Go and follow it now, and. How, how can you hate on a guy that, that, that does that? Like you're just going to absolutely love him, and if he does, I, I hope I hope he I hope he does so well doing doing England. I really really do. But Celtic on Monday and Tuesday is still going to be here. We still roll on, and it's the club. I'm the lucky one. So are you, and so is everybody else that went today, and the people, thousands all over the world, because we get to support the club. 
every single day or the rest of our lives where Postacoglu's came in and he's had two years of it and he knows him. Once he settles down and retires, he'll go, what a time that was and how lucky those fans are because those fans get it every day of their life. That's it. I'll always be here at Celtic, mm -hmm. so are you, so are Martin. Mm -hmm. And how good does that sound that we are there and we're always there? Martin, who knows how the next week or two or even couple of days will unfold. I'm just looking at my watch there. I apologise for that because flashbacks to 2019 when I was standing here doing a video after the Scottish Cup final treble <laughs> victory and I made a video and by the time I'd walked down the street it was, it was out of date because Neil Lennon had been given the job. Um, who knows what will happen in the next few days, the next couple of weeks, but um, you've got to hope that those scenes at the end and, and 30, 40,000 people singing his name it's got to pull his heartstrings a wee bit in it. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of people involved in these things, whether it's player or manager, it's not just out one person, is it? So, you know, you start with the manager first and foremost, and what, what's his thoughts? A lot of people have talked about his wages. I, I would like to think that Celtic could, could could break the bag to give him, you know, a really a really serious increase in his wages. It m maybe wouldn't match what he get down south, but we come close. Um, and it's hard, it's hard to talk figures, because we don't know the figures, just speculation. But yeah. I don't think it's that in isolation. I think it's getting a wee shot in the Prem, Living life in London, Tottenham's quite a unique club as well. I don't think he'd get a bigger club than that at this junction, but you know it's probably the biggest he would get. And you know if he doesn't take the Tottenham job, who would be the next job that would come up? Who, who knows? You know, but it wouldn't, I don't think it would be unless the manager goes in and doesn't survive. Um, but with regards to what he's brought to us, Callum talks brilliantly about his, his tactics and his style of playing all that. I mean, we, we were in the doldrums there. Eh? We couldn't see ourselves coming back, and we genuinely thought Rangers were going to go on and win, you know, two or three consecutive league titles. You know, our, our squad was depleted. Yes, there was some money there, but we weren't sure. You know, it was a complete revamp of the, the team. And other than that first three or four weeks, we were really struggled when we lost three games. He's, he's managed to turn it around, and he's done it without spending a huge amount of money. I know a lot, a lot said about how much money we spend, but they're not... Not a high net spend. Not, not a high net spend, and, and the wages weren't ridiculous either. So he's brought in some cracking players. What he has done as well is he's developed all those players. You know, so a lot of them came in and didn't hit the ground running, but you can just see the progression in those players. Even players that were here, like Taylor and... Every, everyone, you go through that starting eleven today and okay, a lot is at the early stages of his Celtic career, but you can envisage that if he was to hang around in a year's time, he would be your next Hattati type thing. He just develops players. The other thing I love about him is the way he manages the media, um, the way he speaks, the way he represents the club. He, he talks a lot about the fans. He, he takes everything back to the fans and, and how it's all about us mm. and how he make people, you know, people are having a hard time in their life how Celtic by winning a trophy or playing well makes that person feel for 90 minutes and potentially a bit longer than that when they reflect on the game, etc. and they go home happy in what could be a really, really difficult time in their life. And I love it when he speaks like that. You know, he just he brings something really, really special. So not only is he, is, is he, are his tactics fantastic, but, you know, he's, he's brought a lot to the club with a limited budget and he's, he's turned his club around and he's just a fantastic individual, a lovely, a lovely person. And we all wish him well if he does move on. But I'm, I'm not convinced that it's done. Back to my earlier point around the number of people involved. You know, Tottenham have maybe not decided that he's a man. What do their fans think? What do their, 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 their um, directors think? What does Mr Levy think? That you've got agents involved. We've obviously Desmond Dermott's there today with Peter Lawwell. You know, what attempts are they making to keep him at the club? And we've got things that Tottenham can't give them. We've got Europe this year, for example. So I don't think it's a done deal yet, but if you believe the rumours, you know, a lot of things are saying, reliable sources are telling us that Anne just seriously interested. But that doesn't mean the deal's done. You know, Tottenham have to want him. He has to be the number one candidate, not the number two or the number three. So I think there's still, a, there's still it'll be interesting to see whether it's this week or the week after. But we thought we were getting Eddie Howe, didn't we? And that didn't materialise and it went on for a long time. Aye, you never know. You never know these things. Um, Callum, last one on the game to bring us back to the football. Can you, can you pick a standout for the day, Jot, to get the sponsor man of the match? Uh, standout, Martin touched on Callum McGregor, I thought it was really good um, uh, in the middle of the park. And the rest were quite physical, I thought they were, they were quite they were a typical hammer for all it, they just, yeah. just launched themselves into tackles and that's kind of what you need to do, aren't you? people that are much talented, better than you, like you need to let them know that you're there, mm. take a sore one so you go, I'm not coming back that way. Um, I thought Callum McGregor was good, but I probably the man of the match, I'm probably going to give it to Postacoglu. Different because, and I'll give it to you and I'll tell you why. He went into the game this whole week and it was genuinely, everything was nothing about the final. It was just about him and, and, and going away. And I think he's done really, really well to navigate away from that talk and says, look, focus on what we're, what we're about to achieve. It's, it's a world record. Like, forget Bayern Munich, forget Real Madrid. Like, pinnacle clubs. They've not done what this club's done. It's eight trebles, nobody's done it. We set the standards. We were the first British club on this island to take the Champions League. We took it. So we set the standards all around the world. That's what we do. That's what people will see tonight. Celtic have got an eighth treble. 
and that is unique in itself. And Postacoglu had to bring the players and just bring them back down and forget the outside noise, concentrate. And I thought he'd done it superbly well because, again, I didn't think we were overly great today. I thought there was a lot of emotion in the game from the stands, from the players, from everybody. But again, from his time, if I could sum it up, he just gets it done. Whether it's a brilliant performance, you can't play brilliant all the time. He just knows how to win and he, he's got a knack for it. And uh, for me, I'm going to give it to him. Also, player on the pitch, I would give it to Jota because he always tried. Mm. Always tried. To, he, like, he, as you say, the defender's going in, going in quite hard on him. But he just comes back and he wants more, he wants more. I think it's the second goal where he takes the touch in the chest. Yeah. It's brilliant. It is really, really good. Um, and he gets, obviously, the goal for it. He's, he, he just sums up his season as well. And uh, It's just uh, it's just an emotional, mate. It's really emotional. And, like, genuinely, like, just truly blessed to support Celtic, genuinely. Martin. Last words, man. Aye, so, uh, so mine, mine's is similar, similar to Callum in so much as we had to dig deep today. So, you know, I do think that some of it was people, when you're winning all the time, people want to knock you off your man. It doesn't matter whether it's Celtic or whatever else. It doesn't matter what sport it is. People are winning all the time. They want, they want most people who are neutrals want those that, that team to get beat. So, an immense amount of pressure on Celtic to win today. Uh, and a lot of the chat around Postecoglou, I think, was the outside influencers trying to put additional pressure on the club. Mm. So, absolutely, the manager had to dig deep, but the captain did as well. And as Callum says, I, I thought he was excellent today. One of the things I'm loving more and more about him is we love Scott Brown and just that tenacity, you know, and he would say to Tony, go, oh, come on, you know, he's, he'd think the Aberdeen thing, remember? Mm -hmm. That was just Scott yeah. Brown. McGregor's got a completely different style. He is just Ange Postacoglu on the pitch. He's that calmness. Ange stands there and he doesn't get wound up by the linesman or anything, or decisions or VAR or anything. He just hands in the pockets, trusts trust in the preparation that they've, they've made, trusts in the players and lets them get on with it. I remember him saying, when you're sitting at the pictures, if somebody talks, it puts you off the film, doesn't it? And he just, he just trusts in the players. McGregor is that calmness on the pitch and he was exactly that today. We had to dig deep, he dug, he dug deep and he was involved in the goals as well. Just I thought he was excellent and the, the longer and longer he's a captain, I just fall more in love with him. I think he's a, a great ambassador for the club, so for me it's Carl McGregor. Yeah. You, sorry Paul, yeah. just quickly, you think of the great players that's touched this world on Iniesta's, Xavi's, Pirlo's, all the greats, right, in midfield, right? It's McGregor's never going to get to that level, what McGregor's got over them, but he's got five, tre <laughs> mate, five trebles as a player. Like, how unique is that? Nobody, look, Zidane's, there were just world genuine class players that you just go, wow, what a player. They've no got this, the trophy hall that he's got. Five trail. He now goes for me as the second probably greatest ever captain okay. at a Celtic. He's probably going to need to go in there. But behind Billy McNeil, Scott. That's a, that's a debate for another day, mate. Pro, it probably is, <laughs> but it's, it's, so, it's so unique, mate. Genuinely, like, people are going to pinch me moments because we speak about, like, the 90s and stuff like that, how we get battled at times when I was born in the 90s, so you don't really recognise it as much. But now, growing up, and you see it, you'll look back, you'll look back through this era, you genuinely will, and it'll be like, mate, how genuinely lucky will we? And, and you know what? Kenny talk, talked about it as well. We set the standards, not like we've just been given it. He'll have it and go in there. We've worked hard for it. People say, oh, you've got the most money. Well, the club brings in the most money. We do the hardest work. Work on and off the field, so everybody deserves credit. Everybody in the board, like because they get battered that time when COVID was there. As soon as COVID went away, we've came back. It's another treble. And do you know what? For anybody that's watching this outside of Celtic, this is what it feels to be Celtic. This is what we do. This is what we win. And so somebody asked me, Are you no bored of winning? Never. Mate, come no, on, no, mate. Never. It's another treble. It's another one, mate. It's my fifth. <laughs> come I on. I think come again. I never, never lost the final at Hamden in 22 trophies now, I think. That's incredible, incredible, mate. Incredible. incredible. So incredible. my man in matches Callum McGregor. Take it back. <laughs> That's my man in matches Callum McGregor as well. There you go. What a time to be a Celtic fan. Eight trebles, yes. Eight. Wherever you are in the world, enjoy your night. Thank you for your support all season. Um, like this video, comment with your own thoughts below, and we'll see you very soon. Thank you.